bangles, symbol of femininity, beauty around the wrist, integral part of women's apparel, a step toward charm and elegance. The tingle of bangles distinct in the beauty of jewelry. The earlier period of human civilization is known as the Stone Age. Man used to consider women as slaves, kept them in bondage, handcuffed with shackles on their feet. It was women's perception of beauty which transformed these ugly symbols into means of adornment. ancient civilization which is 5,000 years old. From its relics, bracelets, armlets and bangles were discovered. For the poor, urban bangles, some superbly beautiful. Then came the metal age and bangles began to be cast in metal. Attractive blend of music and body movements. Manifestation of perfect harmony. The dancing girl of Moon Jadaro. A unique masterpiece. All the elegant charms of art embodied in this bronze statue. The dancer's left arm from wrist to armpit covered with bangles. In things, even today, bangles are worn in this fashion. Then came the glasses. Nobody knows where and when the glass was first produced. Glasses excavated 2,500 years ago from Egypt are the oldest specimen of glass. In Asia, glass was first produced in China. From China, this industry reached Japan, and from there to the undivided Indian subcontinent. Islamabad, picturesque and beautiful capital of Pakistan. About 35 kilometers to the north of Islamabad is Texela. One, a center of Buddhism. The earliest specimen of glass bangles in the subcontinent were found here about 400 years BC. With the passage of time, the shape of bangles changed, sometimes in the form of armlets, occasionally as bracelets, or even having yet another shape differing only in form. kilometers from Karachi, relics of Bambol, the settlement where the folk heroine Sassi used to live. From Bambol, specimens of glass bangles have been excavated, which date back to between 5th and 13th century AD.
Bangling get through reefs is Zenith during the Mughal period in the 17th century AD. Ladies of the royal families of that glittering era used bracelets studded with diamonds and other precious gems. Whatever the age, whatever the season, it's always time for bangles. Women folk wear all kinds of bangles. Gold bangles are expensive. Silver and gold bangles is a delicate art. In Pakistan, the source of bangle material is different in different regions. In the northern areas, silver bangles are popular. In the type of Salutri song, the style of embellishing arms is entirely different. Here, usually, metal bangles are used. Their exquisite motifs are something to be seen. This is Thur, Pakistan's famous desert. Women of Thur can be identified from their plastic bangles. They call them Bahi, derived from the word Bah, meaning an arm. If a woman is wearing bangles from her wrist to only her arm, she is married. Unmarried girls in Thur wear bangles up to their elbows. Child marriages in her are customary. Arms of young girls covered with bangles denote this custom. Settlements in the outskirts of the desert are centers of bangle industry. When fragrant flowers spring in pieces of thread substitute jewelry, they are known as gajaras. Glass bangles are loved and admired by both rich and poor women. For all of them, bangles, only colorful bangles count. Hyderabad, the largest center of bangle industry in Pakistan. It is called the City of Bangles.
Theatre Independent, large number of Sufi artisans from Ferozabad in India migrated to Hyderabad. That is how this industry took root here. The first bangle factory in Hyderabad was set up under the trade name Indus Glass. Hyderabad's high temperatures and the availability of silica sand in the vicinity played a significant role in the expansion of this industry. Now over 200,000 workers are associated with it. The traditional process of producing bangles is interrupting. Work begins at night when it's cool. One person starts the operation by waking up the workers. He is the foreman known as Jagaya, a derivative of the word Jagana meaning to awaken. After waking, all the workers assemble at a central place. From there, they proceed to their destination in vehicles provided by the factory. The scene now shifts to the factory. Initially, to begin, silica sand, soda ash, and other chemicals are mixed and then heated for 24 hours in the furnace at very high temperature. The mixture slowly takes the form of glass. At that point, an iron rod is used to gather up glass in small quantities. This is locally termed as bubble utana or bubble lifting. On this bubble of glass, now more glass is gathered from the furnace by the gatherer, locally called the Galiwala. The gathered glass is handed over to a skilled worker, locally called loam maker, who is also known as the parameter. He gives the desired shape to the bob or loam and also determines the end product. The gob or loam now travels to the reheater or sitaya who imparts uniform heat to the now cold gob of glass to its correct viscosity for final going into coil. This is Tarwala or grower who relies only on his eyes, experience and judgment and produces glass sets of varying thicknesses. In the next stage, rings resembling three coils begin to emerge. During this process, another worker oscillates the rings to keep them separated from one another. When completed, they are placed in special containers called dumpers. Now comes the intricate stage of cutting. A trained worker cuts the coils, giving them the shape of bangles. He is locally called Kataya. Then begin a series of other operations. The person who strings them in thin pieces of rope called Pivaya and the person who counts the bangles is called Ginaya. 288 bangles are called Akora. This point ends the process of making bangles in factories. Now another significant journey begins. From one abode to another, then to yet another. So far, bangles have not yet taken their final form. For this, women take over. How can the process of creation be complete without their active participation? Specially trained women straighten the rings to make them smooth. They are called southern hari. The opposite end is warm gently. Bend carefully and the cut ends now face each other. Another worker who joins the two ends with great care called Duraya. Bangles though ready have yet to go through another important stage that of adornment and decoration. Using a wet stone, attractive designs are created. The greater the designing operation, the costlier the bangles. After designing, these bangles are once again heated in furnaces to give them strength and permanence to their motor. As a finishing touch, they are painted with an expensive chemical 
for liquid gold. This process is called Hillagana. After this, the bangles are heated once again in the furnace to make the golden chemical sparkle. If needed, brand names are also engraved on them, called Morai. Before leaving the factory, one soda contains 288 bangles. Now, 22 dozen bangles are packed carefully in one packet, also called the soda. During the entire process, despite all the care taken, many bangles crack or break. To compensate for this loss, factory owners add 24 extra bangles. These packets are loaded on trucks and sent throughout the country and then to shops. From there, they are sold to women of all ages. In producing a single bangle, 23 hands are used. The 24th is that of the woman who wears it. The product of the hard work of so many skilled people is sold very cheaply. These women are called Manyarans. They earn their livelihood from selling bangles door to door. Such characters can be seen even now in villages and small towns. There was a time when bangles were only available to women at their doorstep. They would assemble around Manhurans to pick and choose. But now, there are shops to sell bangles. Now, no one hesitates to wear bangles from male hands. In the past, there wasn't any special season for bangles. But now, there are several. Every new set of clothes has to have bangles in matching colors. Use of modern technology has made bangles very inexpensive. Pakistan is the world's first country to produce bangles on automatic plants. The person responsible for this is Ajahn Siddiqui. In this process, a desired spread of glass is made to fall continuously, which is taken up by the machine where spring coils are produced. The unique process imparts both engraved designs and metallic luster colors continuously, all in one go, saving all the intermediary hand processes. This enhances the production by 300%. Thus, only four workers instead of 24 are needed, giving a faster and completely uniform production. Due to its roundness, bangles in Urdu are called Surya. This word churi is also used for many other objects. For instance, a circular twist or for rotation of a machine. A gramophone is also called a churiwala baja. 
special variety of tight-fitting pajamas are called churidar pajama. This type of turban is called churidar pagli. In the outskirts of Karachi, there is a necropolis called Chokundi. It falls back from 13th to 18th century AD. On male graves, turbans have been carved. On female ones, as a mark of distinction, attractive designs of bangles and other jewelry can be seen. Along with modern techniques, Bangles are still being produced in Pakistan using traditional skills. Using firewood, lumps of glass are melted. Molten glass is then rolled around on metallic cylinders called kalboos to give it the shape of bangles. The best feature of such bangles is that they are without joints. In another ancient process, Threads are first produced manually with great skill and precision. They are twisted carefully and stretched slowly, called baldar or sarayaki bhatti. According to the size and circumference of the bangle, thread is then cut. After heating in the furnace, it is rolled around on metallic cylinders the end product is bangles. Bangles are also named after movie stars and important personalities from history. For instance, once Lady Diana bangles were the craze of youngsters. Bangles and women, a fascinating relationship, often manifested through love and affection by exchanging gifts of bangles. To assess the depth of their love for each other, young girls often play an interesting game. They break bangles in a particular style. The greater the broken piece in the hand, the greater is the love for the friend. In the process, if someone is hurt and drops of blood ooze out, it is considered an evidence of the strength of the bond of love. In normal life, if bangles break accidentally, it is a bad omen. Bangles are considered a symbol of suhaag, that is, a state of being married. In some castes, the moment a husband expires, the bangles on the hands of his wife are broken as a ritual. Children are made to wear black bangles to protect them from an evil eye. Black is considered a color to ward off evil. In any crisis to abash those men who fail to rise up to expectations, bangles are sent to the defaulters as gifts. Thus, for men, bangles are a symbol of cowardice, just as a gift of a white feather. Bangles engulf rural life with color and gaiety. In fairs and festivals where laughter reverberates, women from far and near throng stores selling bangles. Every female wrist glitters and jingles with bangles. In the East, the concept of festivity without bangles does not exist. In our society, presentation of bangles is a must at engagements alone with rings.
The great Muslim festival after the holy month of Ramadan is Eid al-Fitr, awaited eagerly for months. Rich and poor, city dwellers and villagers, everyone celebrates Eid with great joy and fervor. Eid, New Bengals and women are closely linked and are inseparable. The night before Eid is known as Chandra, meaning the night on which the moon was sighted heralding the festival the following morning. In bazaars, in stores, wherever you look, lots of multi-colored bangles are all around. Those who are engaged receive bangles, henna and other gifts from their in-laws. On that sparkling night, bazaars are filled with festive crowds. In some large cities, there are markets exclusive for women where the entry of men is barred. On that exciting night, women come out in thousands, especially to buy bangles so that they remain intact on Eid with all their beauty and luster. Wedding is an auspicious occasion. A day prior to the wedding, the bridegroom party participates in an old custom called Mehdi. Without this, no Pakistani wedding is complete. The bride is adorned by green bangles, traditional ornaments, and a sparkling yellow dress. The bride's friends and relations also wear multi-colored bangles. Besides glass bangles, the bride also wears flower bangles called gajra. On the day of the wedding, the bride is dressed colorfully and adorned with all requisites which make her look gorgeous. In this adornment, gold and glass bangles occupy a distinct place. Bangles symbol of femininity. Bangles, auspicious omen of happy married life. Bangles, center of exuberance. Bangles, beauty around the wrist. 